Hello, my name is Visor, and welcome to Game 22, a Let's Play Game Dev Tycoon. Last episode, we did a big bet, but we failed. Just barely, though. So now we're forced to make a sequel to our worst rated game, which is Block Lord Matumbo. Now, somebody was wondering whether it was truly our worst rated game. Because after all, we did make that one junk game to experiment with, you know, making bad games to get game reports. Well, Udon Hair was bad, and it was a 2.5, but if you look at Block Lord Matumbo, it was also a 2.5. Plus, Block Lord Matumbo is probably more of a risk than Udon Hair. The thing about Udon Hair was it actually had great combinations across the board. Everything was great. So if I made a sequel to it, it would be very easy to make a great sequel. But we're not going to really learn anything, and it's not really a challenge, so why bother? So instead, we're going to stick to Block Lord Matumbo. Now, you might be thinking, well, are you actually going to still do sports RPG? Sort of. There will be sports, there will be RPGs, but we're going to try to finagle it so it's at least a decent game. At least it's not going to be a 2.5. Now, I'm not going to do anything cheap, like try to release a small game and says, oh, there's my penalty. I'm definitely going to go for that large self-published game. But anyway, let's go to the game suggestion, which we got quite a few of after you guys saw me fail. So this idea is from Tartantori. It is Block Lord Matumbo 2, The Blockening. Block Lord Matumbo returns in this exciting sequel in which he defends the Earth from block-shaped meteorites with a giant spaceship that is modeled exactly after Block Lord Matumbo. For the most part, I'm gonna stick with this idea, but I will change the title. I think instead of just a sequel, it'll be sort of like a sequel slash reboot. So the title of the game will be a little different. Now, if you look at the genre, you'll see why I said we're gonna be doing an RPG sort of. Off camera, I researched multi-genre games. So for Block Lord Matumbo, I'm thinking we can probably do say an action RPG. Now, I think the order does matter. So I'm picking action RPG because I want it to be a little more focused on action with sports. I think that works out better. Plus it rolls off the tongue better. And finally, RPG action just sounds weird, like it's some sort of weird fetish that I don't know about. I don't know what RPG stands in that case. Plus, I played a lot of pretty good action RPGs like Zelda or the Tale series or, uh, well, I guess Chrono Trigger isn't, but Secret of Mana definitely is. Anyway, as we said, this will be a large game, and I think everyone makes the most sense. As for the name of the game, we're going back to the original title. It's sort of like how they're rebooting series now and just calling it like Tomb Raider. Except in this case, the original title is long as hell. Whatever. I think we owe it to the original idea to use the new longer expanded name function. Anyway, as for platform, well, if you look at play system, it was good with everyone and it was good with RPG. There's a pretty good idea that play system two will be the same way. Additionally, surely these systems will be good with action. There's so many good action games for the Play System and Play System 2. So we're gonna go with the Play System 2 as our platform. Plus it has the market share right now. Why not, you know? As for the game engine, just the new game engine, pretty straightforward. So now we have this out of the way, start developing. Oh, I was also doing a contract before I started developing the game. Now, as for this challenge, we can't do any sort of marketing. We need to skip all sorts of hype. So we actually only have four months to make this game before E3 happens, and that's an issue. Now we can do booth selection. As long as we release the game before G3 actually happens, we won't get the bonus hype. So for this game, since it's multi-genre, my plan is to have sort of a bit of everything. So for sports, or sorry, for action, I would think engine and gameplay is important. And for RPG, I would think gameplay and story and quest is important. So obviously I'm gonna focus on gameplay and do a little bit of story and quest and a little bit of engine. However, my goal is to also get all these features. I'm pretty sure you get a bonus for meeting them. So for this game, I definitely think we need as many bonuses as we can get. As for this order, I think we'll put Jennifer on story and quest. I mean, she is the person that's supposed to be doing all the design stuff. And since we're doing this weird hybrid mix, I'm going to want Erica and Jennifer to handle all the solo elements by themselves. So in stage two, I'm going to have Erica do AI. In stage two, I'm going to have Jennifer do dialogue. I think that's the best way to balance this.
All right, so there comes our natural hype. I'm pretty sure this is related to our fan base, which is decent, but not great. And this market analysis doesn't do jack shit for us because we're, you know, we can't do anything about it. So, oh well. Number-wise, this isn't looking too bad. Efficiency-wise, I don't know why these guys are dropping so fast. Definitely not going to break the records from last game, though. Anyway, now that we're on stage two, like I said, I'm going to do a mix sort of like stage one. Pretty sure level design is important for both, so we'll do it like this, and then have Jennifer do dialogue and... Well, we might have Jonathan do artificial intelligence. Mostly because he has a lot more tech points than Erica. Plus, we have enough people for stage 3, so we don't really need to save him. However, as to why I don't have him do stage 1 and stage 2, it's because stage 3 seems like it's a mix of design and technology. None of those things in stage 3 are pure tech, so Erica is not useful in stage 3 at all. On the other hand, Jonathan has a lot of design points, so he's useful for stage 3 way more than Erica. Actually, I wonder if he's a famous person. Seems like it with the stats. Number-wise, it's not as good as our last game, but it's not bad. At least it'll be better than the tragedy that was Black Lord Matumbo. Probably. I am a little worried about the mix, though. Because it seems like maybe I have too many design points for an action RPG. Possibly. That's just my gut feeling, anyway. Okay, um, honestly, at this point, I don't know which one's more important. If I were to do an action game, I would emphasize graphics and sound. If I'm doing an RPG, I would emphasize world design. Maybe should I just do a bit of everything? Oh, by the way, these bars only affect this percentage down here. This is actually the same thing as if I were to lower all of them. But with completely empty bars, it's harder to tweak your time allocation. Anyway, so how are you going to divide this up? Well, obviously Jennifer can't be doing this. We need to stick... Who has the best design? I guess Marcus. Yeah, we'll stick Marcus on world design. And then we'll stick Jonathan on... Uh, sound... No, we'll stick Jonathan on graphics. I was thinking about putting Jonathan on sound and then putting Michelle on graphics, but I think this is a better mix. Oh no, Jonathan's slightly overworked. That's not a good mix. Huh, let me increase, like I said earlier, decrease control. Anyway, so we're gonna decrease graphics a little bit, and that should do. Yeah, that looks good. Now these guys, efficiency bar is pretty low. I don't know if I'm just seeing things, but it looks like they're generating fewer points to me. Maybe I need to work on getting everybody's vacation synced with each other or something. We probably didn't need this extra problem this time around. Anyway, we still have about a month until G3 starts. So we need to get this done quickly. Vacation. Vacation. We're going to wait for the last second. I'm telling you now. Because I would need as many points as I can to get from these guys. Well, that was the last minute. Yeah, we don't have much time left. We have like one more week, so let's release this. Ooh, a new record in design. Do I want a new record in design? It's an action RPG. Maybe? Oh, we didn't level up our graphics. That's unfortunate. But anyway, let's release the game. Not too concerned. Eric Robinson. I can probably train boost on her now. Something I probably should consider. Anyway, let's see those final game reviews. Ah! Ah, okay, that's, uh, you know. I would have been a really fucking happy if this was better than our previous game. <laughs> that would have been fucking amazing. But okay, so it's a 7.5. Not as good as our 8, but still, it's a pretty damn good game, right? I mean, really, this could have been a challenge game instead of a penalty game. Either way, though, let's go see the final game report and the final sales numbers. All right, so looking at the final game report, we got that sports and action RPG is a good combination. Not sure how that's determined, but I'm assuming it's because action was more important 
and the negative side of RPG was offset. Additionally, we also got that graphics is very important, which I guess is good. We put a lot into graphics. Not sure about the other stuff, though. We also gained some additional insight that we should focus the entire team on the development of the game, which we did. I'm guessing maybe the balance wasn't as perfect, but we got good management, so I don't really care. And also, we got one more bit of feedback. Apparently, at 250k fans, that's when you're supposed to be able to self-publish large games. Which, oops, we've been doing anyway, so no big deal, I guess. As for the final sales numbers, we sort of see what the effect of not hyping our game does. Technically, the Kimbe Matumbo Block Lord Gaiden had a higher sales rank, but it actually sold fewer copies. This is probably because, you know, it didn't have as much hype. Pretty straightforward. Though we also gained more fans, so... I don't know. It's a little complicated in the end. But anyway, that's pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully we'll do even better next episode. But until then, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you guys next time.